What's up class and welcome back to another lesson in the no mod shop class here on the school zone. In just a second we'll be heading over to home plate where I have a few quick but amazing tips and tricks to show you that'll make one of the most difficult settlement locations to build at much much easier. But before we catch a ride over there on the school bus it's time for a peek at this month's wall of fame. As you probably know by now I feature the names of my amazing Patreon supporters once a month on this here wall of fame and here are my fantastic Patreons this month. I really want to thank all of you for helping me get a little closer to doing YouTube full time. And thanks to their support, I was able to upgrade my microphone this month. I'll be making a comparison video in the weeks ahead once a few more items arrive in the mail and I get it all set up and learn all the new settings and everything. It's going to be amazing. Now, if you too want to help support the channel, jump over to my Patreon page and see what you can do. Every dollar is reinvested in the channel to bring you guys better and better quality. All right, with all that said, hop on board the school bus and I'll meet you in Diamond City. Okay, here we are at Home Plate. If you don't already know how to get Home Plate as a settlement location, just ride up to the mayor's office and speak to Geneva. She'll sell it to you for 2,000 caps. Now this location has a lot of advantages and also a few disadvantages. Among the advantages, you can fast travel into and out of the interior here, which is super convenient. It's also very difficult to go over the size limit in here. But if you do have to use a settlement size glitch, even a few times, you probably won't see any frame drops because it's such a small location and the game doesn't have to deal with weather conditions and animating settlers and you just can't build enough in here to really cause it to have any problems unless you just go you know buck wild or something. Now it doesn't allow for settlers anyway but that could also be an advantage because this can be the location where you display all your wicked legendary items with no worries about settlers stealing them out of containers or off wall displays which they do do. <laughs> now one of the major disadvantages however is the severe restrictions on the available workshop items to build. I hadn't previously built anything in here yet because of those severe building restrictions. I also wanted to wait until I had all the DLC to see if there was some new options that opened up before I, you know, put a lot of effort into it, which they did. However, with three new tricks I discovered, it's finally going to make building up home plate a worthwhile endeavor. I'm going to turn home plate here into the coolest little bachelor pad man cave you've ever seen. So stay tuned for that upcoming video. But I thought I'd share these tricks with you now instead of waiting until it was all done so you could take advantage of them too. And so I could actually have the room to show you some of this stuff. I'll just give you a super quick tour of what I've done so far, which is really not much. It's just been experimenting with some of these new tricks. All right. So this is what I got going on here. This is what I got going on here. As you can see, it's just getting started here. All right. But let's go ahead and get started with these tips and tricks. First of all, the settlement doesn't allow you to build any generators. It just comes with a single fuse box here, which you can't scrap or store but you can move it around to wherever you want. So it could end up being, you know, like a wall switch that to turn on the lights or just whatever. But the first trick is something I already showed you guys in a previous video, and that is the Wi-Fi glitch. The Wi-Fi glitch does work in home plate with this fuse box, okay? So I've already put it to good use here. This light right here is being powered by this wireless conduit here. And I have another wireless conduit right here that those aren't going to be the permanent places for them i'm just setting it up so i can actually see in here <laughs> home plague starts off as a really dark location so you need to light it up like crazy and with this wi-fi glitch now that works in here i can just light this place up like daylight it's gonna be crazy uh just as a, an experiment here i don't even know if i'm gonna keep this it does look kind of cool but i decided to put up all the posters here now the posters themselves are wired to each other because, you know, it would have made very little difference to Wi-Fi glitch those. But the central power source where it's coming from is that conduit right there. And that is Wi-Fi glitched to the switch. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of possibilities here. I'm gonna be putting up big light wall boxes. I'm just gonna be going crazy. It's gonna be awesome, okay. So that's the first trick. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the Wi-Fi glitch, I've made two videos about it so far, and I'll link both of them down for you in the description below and the iCard above. Okay, the second trick is that you can actually extend some of the flooring upstairs by using mats. Now, some of you guys probably already know this. This isn't the, the finale trick I'm gonna show you, but you know, you can extend these things out a little bit here. And, you know, it gave me some extra room for a bed so I could actually walk around here, maybe put a chest there. And then up here, I started up a little office area. 
which extends that out over the bed. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It gives it a little canopy for the bed as well. And I can reach the bed with no problems. All right, so uh, just slide one of these rugs. Actually, the rubber mats look best, and you can start to uh, add some flooring with that. Okay, so that really helps. As you can see, that extended the area up there out quite a bit, and even further with that uh, desk I was able to do. It gives you a little extra real estate. Okay, and then the third trick that I'm gonna show you is, I think is the best. Oh, here's another little minor trick. These um, fluorescent lights, the flat ones stick to walls and can actually be used as shelves, all right? So it's pretty cool because it's a, it's a bigger type shelf and it's underlit. So you get a bonus with that, all right? So that's a little minor. That wasn't one of the tricks I was gonna show you. Okay, so here's the third trick I was gonna show you. And that is you can actually pillar glitch things in here. Now, some of you may already know this from using the Raider items down here under miscellaneous. Uh, you can use these, um, no, I think it's in structures actually. Uh, structures, yeah, you just have this one item, these totem poles, and you can use these to sink. But these aren't actually the best items to use to sink things because they don't sink into the ground very far. Uh, this one might go. No, see, it just gets, it bumps up against something and it stops. So I actually found a way better item to use for pillar glitching that actually is super awesome. It, it just works like a charm. And that is under the power section. If you go down to miscellaneous, this hoop switch, all right? So this hoop switch can actually sink into the ground and it's super tall and sinks in really far, all right? So if you start it up really high, you can sink things down pretty far. And the reason why this is important, well, first of all, you can see some of the things over here I did with it. Let me cancel out of that. Uh, I already started to put in some kitchen furniture in here, and I was able to make this little area right here into a super subtle little frying grill, all right? It's hard to see. I, I should have lifted the flames up a little higher, but can you see the flames licking through there? <laughs> it's really cool. So I'll have some meats on display and some corn on the cob or something. But uh, I didn't want to raise it too high because then the rocks from the fireplace start showing through. Yeah, right about maybe just another inch or so I can get the flames a little higher. But um, yeah, that worked out really well. I might even try to put two fires or um, campfires into these two things so you can see the flames a little more prominently. But yeah, some of this stuff worked out great. But here's the part I'm really excited about, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go back into workshop and get out that hoop switch. Put it about right there. I don't want to interfere with anything around. And then, see this table I had sticking out over here? This table only costs three steel to make, and it has a really nice wooden top finish to it. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to do them all right now, but check out what I'm going to do with this, okay? So I'm going to put that right. Yeah, let's go around the other side, right there. Okay. Nope. And then you just group select the hoop switch. Now I can sink this floor into the ground and I'm gonna make wood tiling. All right, look at this. I can even go through the, uh, the pillar there. See, I'm gonna do it from the other direction here. Line it up with the grain of the wood. I'm gonna get it right the first time, but I just wanna show you what I'm talking about here. All right, pretty close. I can work on that, but uh, but check it out. Now, imagine if I put a bunch of these side by side and then just ran them all through the room here, we're gonna have a nice wooden floor, <laughs> a custom made wooden floor, all right? I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna turn out really well, especially since it can go through the pillars. So that means I can go through all these pillars. I can pillar it under these things, even under the door a little bit so there's no gaps. And with these things only costing three steel each, I mean, that's like, it's only gonna take me probably about a hundred steel to uh, refloor this whole area. So I'm super excited about that. Wanted to share all those little tips and tricks for you so that you can actually make home plate a worthwhile place to, to build. 
All right, my friends. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Those are my quick tips and tricks for making building at home plate a more enjoyable and versatile experience. I'd love to hear if you guys have any other ideas on things you can do with home plate or that you've done down in the after school club below. If I use your idea, I'll definitely credit you in the upcoming showcase tour. Hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and throw a like on the video and I'll be back soon with another fun video. Happy building and class dismissed.